Good to see you for the one last time, dear ladies and gentlemen. This is our closing session, and we can really say these have been very stimulating 36 hours, right? Right? <laughs> It's so good to hear that lots, lots of energy is still left for networking after this event. Uh, we had really interesting presentations from Nobel Prize winners to the youngest guest on stage who has just now won the Youth Essay Award, so Kristina Dimova from Bulgaria. Uh, so I'm here just to send you off with some um, um, summing up all the things that we've heard and seen in these uh, three days, um, to come up with some concrete ideas of how SME policy should evolve against the background of the post-COVID recovery and in order to achieve a more sustainable European economy. So our keynote speakers will share their highlights of the past one and a half days uh, in that respect and set out their top priority for a sustainable transition. And so it's my pleasure to introduce first to the stage Mrs. Auti Slotbum, the Director for Strategy from the European Commission. Thank you very much, Moita. Good uh, morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here at the end of what has been, from my perspective, a very successful, very interesting event. We have had discussions on many different issues, all related to what is the core of uh, the Europe's economy, its uh, small and medium-sized businesses. I will not list what has been discussed already. I will uh, give you some of my highlights. For a more detailed record, I invite everybody to visit the conference app afterwards or to visit our YouTube channel where you can watch again everything that has taken place during these three days. Everything fits under the three key goals, sustainable, digital and entrepreneurial. And you see on the screen the visualization of uh, how we could, in a mind map, visual fashion, show what we have discussed. So this is something that I hope we all take with us where we leave. But starting from what many of you have praised already, the Schumpeter lecture, Professor Bogart, I was very clear, if we do not move fast, we will be moved aside by nature. To prevent this from happening, the Sustainable Enterprise Panel gave us very valuable ideas on how to turn our economy into a sustainable economy. The key in this exercise is to establish a permanent dialogue between policymakers and entrepreneurs seek feedback, seek ideas to ensure that the ambitious policies are realistic and can be implemented without a disproportionate burden, also by smaller companies. The European Climate Pact is about partnership and shared leadership. The green and digital transition can succeed only if citizens and consumers, as well as businesses, big and small, become part of this movement. EU funds have been put in place to support the political priorities. In the current multi-annual financial framework until 2027, 30% of the EU long-term budget and the next generation EU budget is dedicated to fighting climate change. Together, we need to make sure that Fit for 55, the climate pact and missions, like the one to restore our oceans and waters and other similar activities, uh, do not turn into 
a bureaucratic monster, but truly deliver what they are expected to deliver to us. Regarding digitalization, several points were discussed here at the SME assembly. The pandemic has accelerated digitalization. However, although the crisis delivered clear evidence about the importance of digitalization for the resilience of enterprises, far too many SMEs still do not consider digitalization as something essential for their business. As has become clear in several sessions, EU and national support measures can help to allow SMEs to make the transition towards digitalization. Also, the discussions around the defense and space ecosystem show the way forward for the progress we have already made and we want to take further. In the discussion on new ways of working, we made clear that these ways can only be found if we work together in cooperation between employers and employees. At this point, I would like to thank the Economic and Social Committee for its strong contribution to this assembly, and uh, in particular, Milena Angelova, who is here as my fellow speaker in this final session. And finally, I come to the entrepreneurial th thread. Schumpeter said that uh, the entrepreneur is the pivot on which all turns. We make sure that the entrepreneur must remain the center point with our support actions, which cover the entire life cycle of a company, from a start-up to a transfer of business, and with a particular focus on promoting entrepreneurship among women. We acknowledge the economic and social potential of women entrepreneurs to master the twin transition to a digital and green society. The goal is to achieve a positive impact on the economy by enabling the application of these transversal competencies to address social challenges and to apply the skills in different economic sectors. European startups and scale-ups face several challenges to attract and retain talent, to secure market opportunities and to increase revenues to do business. The session on the Startup Nation Standard focused on presenting the recent developments in creating a startup-friendly ecosystem, including the setting up of the European Startup Nations Alliance and the best ways to involve stakeholders in the work of this alliance. Late payments compromise SMEs and startup survival. In particular, during the pandemic, the chances of SMEs to grow and their ability to become more resilient, green and digital can be seriously compromised if they are not paid on the invoices. The policy workshops on late payment tackled this problem and proposed very interesting ways to introduce a prompt payment culture in Europe, taking the construction ecosystem as a pilot. The EU Observatory on Payments will give us a better overview of payment discipline by the public sector and by businesses. The observatory will help us detect trends which will allow for targeted actions. Every year, around 450,000 firms and over 2 million employees are transferred to new owners. The masterclass on transfer of business presented the Commission's work on improving the evidence based on business transfers. It discussed uh, the possibilities of making available handbooks, guidelines, 
training programs and compete of best practices to ease business transfers. The discussion on EU countries and their experiences in this area demonstrated, among other things, the effectiveness of national advisory boards on business transfers to build coherent transfer ecosystems. So these were the highlights that I personally wanted to share with you. Again, I want to thank everybody for your participation, for your presence here in the building, and I want to thank everybody who followed the event online. Now I'm very happy to hand back to Moicha and thank you for all your inputs. Thank you, Oti. Uh, we have two more ladies joining us right now, so please welcome online. With us is a member of the European Parliament, Martina Dlabajova. Martina, hello. Good to see you. Can you hear us well, see us well? Hello. Greetings oh, from yes. Porto Rosh, Slovenia. And uh, hello. please, hello. Uh, we, would like <laughs> Hi. we would like to hear your perspective and your conclusions. Thank you so much, Mira. Thank you, and uh, really have a great day to all of you in Portorosh. Uh, I'm so sad I cannot be there in person, but be uh, sure that I followed very closely the whole SME's assembly. And I would like really to thank you for the invitation. I'm always happy to have an opportunity to speak on such a great event as the SME assembly is. And thanks to Commission and Council and all actors to organize this event. I must say that I appreciate very much the concept that this event is not about SMEs, but it is for SMEs. Thank you for organizing it and calling for concrete actions for millions of European entrepreneurs and small businesses who are coming through very difficult times and at the same moment must face many challenges, mainly high energy prices, digital and green transition, which are not only our future, but are present. SMEs still need to adapt to the disruption of business as we knew before COVID. Look at their business plans and make decisions built on, for example, the extraordinary opportunities of the recovery plans. This is all happening while still, let's admit it, the next month's operations are unclear depending on our government's decisions. Maybe there is one recipe or at least some advice. Crises are always an opportunity to learn, to improve beyond limits that prove to be temporary. This could be a great moment for taking a new turn in business. The past year has brought a revolution in our offices, our factories, and even in our homes. Nobody could imagine something like that in 2019. I think that the small and medium-sized enterprises have so far shown that they know what I'm talking about. Many of them have used the crisis to make it an opportunity and a real chance to find a new creative path or show an extreme degree of flexibility. Many of them prove their resilience. Remember how flexible SMEs were in the deepest crisis and very often managed to reorient their business from day to day without much preparation to the fields that were most needed. They were not afraid to innovate, to be creative, look for solutions, and take risks. This is something that big businesses can only dream of. Sometimes, in many cases, the ongoing crisis has forced small and medium-sized enterprises to make decisions and take steps they might not have taken without external pressure. Sometimes in life, there must be something that forces you to get out of your comfort zone and it creates an opportunity for you to take. Let's look at digitalization. Telemedicine solutions deployment has increased eight times in a year with a faster pace than in, it was 10 years ago. Many public administrations have redesigned their procedures and offered simpler, more efficient online platforms. E-commerce proved to be a true window of opportunity for many SMEs as we could see in the latest SME performance review 
published last July by the European Commission. Moreover, it showed how this pandemic really pushed for basic digitalization in general, even for SMEs outside the digital sector. Where the customers could not line up in real life, many entrepreneurs decided to sell online on online marketplaces and reach an even wider community. Many have improved communication with existing and new clients thanks to digital platforms, and it increased efficiency. Many have started to use the social media, learned new strategies for self-promotion and customer targeting. This is something nobody will ever take away from them. But what is important, and I would not like us to forget about it, in some countries, SMEs were ahead of the online economy already before the pandemic. Of course, with differences per sectors and geography. Crisis has shown us one important thing. The main obstacle for businesses was the disruption of logistics. It revealed the small and micro companies still face difficulties in operating online or incorporating digital solutions. The reasons are mentioned by SMEs themselves, uh, limited human resources and the lack of skills. As our young entrepreneurs underlined before me, just before this, this panel. So the lack of skills, not only the digital skills of the employee, but also the lack of training for managers. Advanced digital skills will be one of the most valuable assets in the future. And now I'm coming to us, to politicians, because crises means opportunities, not only for SMEs themselves, but also for politicians. Last year, when I was speaking here, I told you that I was convinced that the importance of SMEs in our economies had been recognized at EU level. Yeah, it has been. But being frank, the EU institutions, included my institution, have been promising a lot, but delivered still too little. We still need to do more. <clears throat> As co-chair of the SME Intergroup, of the European Parliament, I came back to work in this mandate from summer 2019 with an event in the Parliament on SMEs. I wanted to look at the architecture of the SME vision for the new mandate. We lamented the working in silos routine, which is still sometimes a problem in the European Parliament, in the European Commission, in the Council and in the national governments. We set together a goal, not having a SMEs policy, but working for SMEs in any sector, being it tourism, being it tech, be it architecture, ar agriculture, sorry. We also stressed how important it would be to structure the role of the EU SME envoy, to act horizontally in Brussels and with the national envoys. This event in the European Parliament happened in September 2019, and we are now in November 2021 and we are still without an envoy. With my colleagues in the Renew Europe political group, we published policy paper called Our Commitment to Europe's SMEs, where we outlined our concrete priorities to protect SMEs in post-pandemic landscape. It is de facto political program of our newly established permanent SME task force. It includes MEPs from all parliamentary committees representing several member states. We have promised that we will always consider the European Commission proposals, legislation, and other EU actions through the SME lens, as well as prioritizing and promoting SMEs in policy work. We are also strongly convinced we need a strict application of the SME test, which helps implement the important Think Small principle. And we need a roadmap with clear timeline and milestones. A roadmap that will give businesses a clear idea of what will happen and what is being done for them. We are also stressing that SMEs need better regulation. I don't like to hear the word deregulation. Businesses don't need just cuts here and there. They need a simple working environment with proposals and reforms that foster competitiveness and progress for entrepreneurs. I subscribe the idea of applying the one in, one out principle to move forward the status quo. And let me say it loud and clear here, the work of policymakers cannot happen without a close dialogue with SMEs representations. 
I will not name them all, there are many, but yes, if we want to talk about one in, one out principle, we need to look together at what the one out is. It should be the one that has worked for the businesses and that we want to keep. We need our governments to be working with us. In this sense, I very much count on you on national and voice to be powerful actors in promoting reforms nationally across the ministries. And I'm going to the conclusion, as I said already a couple of times ago, we want more than words. It is one of the reasons I have called for a state of the SMEs union. This debate took place in June 2021 in plenary in Strasbourg and was given by the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. I want it to be a big appointment, every year appointment, with the SME performance report at hand, with solid analysis of what is working, how to foster good practices. In one word, how all the actors in the EU can work better for SMEs and not vice versa. Thank you so much. And in person with us, our last speaker today, please welcome Milina Angelova, who is a member of the Economic and Social Committee. Thank you very much and thank you Moitze for the introduction and Uti for your kind words of appreciation of the work carried out by the European Economic and Social Committee. I also do subscribe to everything you said and to uh, the conclusions Martina just uh, drew, and I will try to build a little bit further to them. It has been indeed intense and impressive three days as we were able to meet, exchange ideas and arrive together at solutions what can be done better and more effective for the benefit of SME communities. I take with me five conclusions for this meeting. First, my conviction that the SMEs are the engine that pulls us out of the current trying times and moves us forward to a sustainable and job-rich recovery has grown stronger during these days. The SMEs across Europe are key econ for economic recovery as they are grass-rooted at each and every corner of the European Union and especially the remote and rural areas where quite often they are the only source of employment and uh, the only economic generating factor. Therefore, the economic recovery depends largely on the successfully uh, SME adaptation to an operation in the new post-pandemic reality also shaped up by the twin transition. And I'm happy to see this, uh, that in spite of all the challenges, the SME continue to innovate, create, and be agile, and to accomplish exemplary projects and achieve impressive results, as we all, uh, saw yesterday during the uh, awards ceremony. The reason is the unvanquished entrepreneurial spirit that has moved forward the SME community. Still, we shall bear in mind that apart those successful examples, then we have the vast majority of the SME community struggles over difficulties such as supply chain disruptions, significant revenue losses, rising inflation, rising prices of energy and gas supply, and all these cause negative impact on cash flow and sustainability. The SME strategy, in synergy with the industrial strategy, provide instrumental tool to respond to those challenges and help SMEs navigate through these troubled waters. Listening carefully to all distinguished speakers, I'm confident that the need of a detailed, diversified approach when devising SME support measures, taking into consideration their heterogeneity and diverse needs, uh, is really uptaken correctly and that we have a very responsible approach to uh, device SME support measures. And I'm confident that SME Envoy Network will translate, keep translating those recommendations into particular policies that answer to the needs of each and every one of the SMEs and no one will be left behind. As already said, 
we are looking forward to see soon a uh, European SME envoy appointed to really lead this process forward. Second, the green transition can only be successful if SME focused. This is especially valid in the case of support measures necessary for the SMEs to help them understand and uh, uh, be aware of the nature of the green transition, which also involves uh, short-term, medium-term and long-term measures to help SMEs be prepared for this. Many SMEs face success, uh, substantial lack of knowledge and understanding on the specific climate and environmental policies, including regarding the requirements of the new financial rules, for example, the taxonomy. As the SME performance review is really important instrument to allow for analysis and policy measures uh, um, elaboration, we would like to suggest that the next year SME performance uh, review is really focused on the green uh, challenges that SME face. I know that it's one of the ideas. So that uh, uh, help generates ideas how to help SMEs get prepared for that. Also, it will be very interesting to have a look uh, what are the differences between the preparedness of SMEs for the green transition and for the digital transition and how to create synergies between the two. Third, after all the efforts and policy measures, still many SMEs report that they have severe difficulties in getting financed. The discussion clearly pointed that most of the SMEs need better access to finance and uh, they, they have increased demand for grants vis-a-vis -vis financial instruments. The European Union are, measures are key to help funding the potential of uh, SMEs and especially important are the European funds. In that regard, I fully uptake and subscribe to the idea of Christoph Lidl for one sheet uh, application for the SMEs to access the European funds. Together with this, I suggest that we create and develop a network of funding and financing ombudsmen in the member states who can consider what are the obstacles for SMEs to get financed and they also can help the European Commission collect and analyze qualitative data to learn about how the intermediary banks uh, are channeling the financial instruments to SMEs and if they reach those SMEs most of need. Also, uh, with the active support of SMEs organization, uh, specific measures should be introduced to educate managers to use the full spectrum of available funding sources, and especially those that come uh, under the European Capital Market Union initiative, uh, So, because the SMEs are not quite aware for the uh, possibilities given by capital markets. Fourth, better regulation and supporting environment is a must to be able not only to survive, but to thrive, grow, and expand successfully, contributing to the development of the European economy, quality job creation, and well-being, SMEs need extra effort in order to be provided with a favorable business environment. Bureaucracy and complex European and national legislation are still reported to be an obstacle for many SMEs in many member states. The principle of better regulation and competitiveness check shall be guaranteed in introducing new policy measures and administrative procedures streamlined as to avoid focusing resources to activities that not uh, support the economic development. Fifth, what was for me missing in our discussion is how the war for talent affects SMEs. The pandemic kept many companies closed for more than a year, forcing the workers to get reskilled and uh, find employment in other sectors. This further aggravated the situation with human resources for the SMEs. Therefore, employing, motivating, and retaining human resources is key important area of action of SME that need extra support. Of course, both European Social Fund Plus and Erasmus Plus are instrumental tools to help SMEs tackle this. In a conclusion, as we share the common goal of promoting and supporting SMEs across Europe, I can assure you on behalf of the European Economic and Social Committee that we stand ready and be reliable partner as together with the institutions and stakeholder deliver 
on implementing the important conclusions we arrived together during these three days. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Oti. Thank you, Martina and Milena. I know we've asked you to stay on stage and online for some Q&As, but unfortunately, we won't have time. So please, really, thank you for your understanding. Um, and a big round of applause for the amazing women creating our future as well. Thank you. Thank you. So I invite you. Thank you as well. Martina for being with us. The applause was for you as well. It's now time for a handover, dear ladies and gentlemen, from our host of this year's assembly from Slovenia to next year's host, the Czech Republic. It's as well a moment for me to do the handover, to say goodbye and to thank you for being a wonderful audience. Thank you for participating, for asking questions. It was really a pleasure to work for and with you. Uh, and now, uh, please let me announce a professional in the field uh, to do the official handover. Please welcome Andre Meyer. Thank you, thank you, Moitza. Uh, it's rather that the professional just left the stage and the amateur is now here, but let's leave that aside. Kuala, many thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, give it away for her. She was just great. Determination, <laughs> kindness. <laughs> this is always the moment where we end this year's assembly and hand over to the next. And uh, this is also always the moment to thank all those who were involved. I'll not name everybody. First, it will take too long, and second, there is always danger that you miss somebody out who will then afterwards say, why didn't you list me? What I'm going to do quickly is to list the teams that have helped us. I would like to start with my DG Grow colleagues and the executive agency colleagues who have helped to bring this about. Guys, you rock. Thank you very much. Thanks also to our friends from the OECD and to our interpreters. Thank you very much. <laughs> and a, a, very s a very personal thanks I would like to uh, also um, voice for the hotel team here in the Grand Bernardin and the two other Saba Group hotels, mainly for the 189 espressos that I got over these few days. Let me continue. <laughs> we had a transport company, Nomago, and our travel advisors, Amex. We had a virtual experience that was brought by Silicon Hagen. Some of you could benefit from that, and the Ocean and Waters workshops benefited from that. And because we're in COVID times still, um, these headsets were, were disinfected from uh, with uh, disinfection boxes from a company called GC Healthcare. Now we come to the core. We do this assembly, we organize this assembly with a team from a contractor. So I'd like to thank the Low Europe team and their consortium partners and subcontractors, Gopacom and Abbott. Thank you, guys. <laughs> At several times during workshops during the assembly, we showed you graphical harvesting. And those who are with us already since longer know that this is a fixture in uh, uh, our, our work. This is brought to you by Co-Creative Flow and Raku. Raku sits far away from here. The company is from Finland, but we were joined by them online. Uh, you know how they say in TV and radio, this broadcast contained product placements. We organize the conference every year with the council presidencies. Please give it away once more for Yane Saletzel, the SME envoy for the Republic of Slovenia, and for his team. Thank you, Yane. Well, please join me on stage.
Thank you very much, uh, Andre, once again for uh, giving me the floor the one last time at this uh, event. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I, um, I can proudly say that hosting this event, this assembly was definitely one of the highlights of our presidency. Uh, and because our presidency is uh, almost over, we can proudly say that we managed to work within our priorities almost within 100%, especially within the Competitiveness Council. Uh, and that our work were, was based on the renewed industrial strategy with big em emphasis on green and digital transition. We also managed to highlight some specific industrial ecosystems such as textile sector and energy in intensive sectors. Fit for 55 package from an industrial point of view was discussed at ministerial level in September and focus on competitiveness council next, will, next week will be on the recovery and national recovery and resilience plans. I'm also pleased that SME policy will be discussed during uh, ministers working lunch next week during the competitiveness council. And uh, I can assure you that we will try our best to stimulate the debate around priorities of the SMEs, of the policies that will uh, create post-COVID uh, periods and times and to work around uh, those policies and uh, the SMEs roles and benefits from the recovery and the re resilience plans. I believe that SME assembly conclusions can absolutely benefit the discussions and the timing couldn't be more perfect. Well, to be honest, I don't think it is a coincidence in, in timing. And now, at the very end, before we hand over uh, this event to, uh, to our colleagues in Czech Republic, please let me say a few thank you words, thank you words uh, as well, because it definitely is in order uh, to, to say thank you in the beginning to each and every one of you that came here to Slovenia, that participated in this assembly. We were really proud that we were that we're able to welcome you here in person, like I said already, because not, ju not just because this shows courage on, on your side uh, to come to Slovenia, but also uh, it shows that you trust us, that, just, that you trust our organization, that the event will be safe, that you feel safe here. And last but not least, that you are passionate about the SME. This is probably the most important. A lot of thank you words were already said. I, I, I would just compliment what uh, Andre said already. Don't want to miss anybody out. Uh, thank you very much, uh, of course, to the uh, low team. Thank you very much to the commission. Thank you to you, uh, Andre. Uh, your work here, I think, is exceptional. Uh, but most of all, uh, I must say, the biggest thank you word goes to, uh, to my team. To, I know everything you do is for you everyday business. For us, having a presidency isn't an everyday business. And I must say, I'm really proud taking all the congratulations uh, during past few days. But I, I'm only the guy in the front. The real hard work happens in the background. And the real hard work, the long hours, happened during next uh, last three or four months. Working weekends, working late. My team in, in Maribor worked exceptionally on this. Thank you, Daria. Thank you, Misha. Thank you, Karuna. Karuna. And most of all, thank you to you, Marlene. You exceptional team. <laughs> Except, <laughs> exceptional team needs an exceptional leader that leads this team, devoted, passionate. Marlene, all of this is you. I wanted to thank you for your effort. I would like, to, I would like you to come to join me on the stage. I know you don't like that. I know you're angry with me right now. But please, I would really like to acknowledge your work and all the hard work you've done in these past years and present you with a, with a small token of gratitude.
for me, she is the real hero of this SME assembly. What she has done in the past few weeks and months, it's been really a miracle. And this is why we can have such a great event. And this is why we can hand over this great event to the, uh, to the next organizer, uh, to Czech Republic, to my follow envoy, Marian, welcoming uh, you online, unfortunately not in person, but uh, I hope to see you uh, next year in person in, in Czech Republic. From all my heart, I wish you that you will be able to host the SME assembly in a bit more pleasant, a bit more optimistic atmosphere, atmosphere and a bit less positive atmosphere, if you know what I mean in this day. So, <laughs> handing over to you. Well, the show must go on. The baton changes hands. As we said, uh, we'll bring the SME assembly to Czech Republic, to Prague. Marian, are you, are you ready? I'm ready. Hello. Good, uh, good morning to, from Prague. Uh, I'm very excited about uh, hosting uh, the SME Envoy Committee next year. And I see that the Slovenian presidency has set the bar very high. So we will really need to work hard, but I have also a great team already focusing on, on the events. And if I may tell you some, some things from our kitchen, we will show you how we do things in Czech, the green way, the digital way. We will show you a lot of examples. But I think the most important is to continue, continue with the work already done. And thank you very much. Thank you, the Slovenian uh, presidency, for an excellent job. And I promise we will continue. We will continue <clears throat> uh, because the, uh, the goals set, the challenges like greening, uh, uh, digitalizing, there are great, great things in front of us. But I would really like to focus to go on the basics to really see what we can do to, for our SMEs, how we can help them and really test that we are not doing any significant harm to the SMEs while preparing new and new uh, legislation. So really focusing on the test, think small first principle and going back to the basics. That's the, the idea of the Czech presidency in a in a spirit of SME, SME assembly. But probably all of you know Prague very well. It's a beautiful city and uh, we, we will show you around. So please come. It will be a, a good event, uh, not only from the position of working, committing and delivering, but also I, I think the bars will be open and we'll have a great fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Marian. Thank you very much. Um, actually, um, we're starting working with the Czech team in about an hour, so um, <laughs> we, are, we are ready. With many thanks to everybody again, I hereby declare the 2021 SME Assembly closed. I wish you a safe journey home, and I see you next year in Prague. And let's see what the Czech Republic has in store for us in a little video. Thank you. Czech Republic. Do you know what the Czech Republic and its inhabitants are like? We are creative and we love technologies. Do you know that the first robot was Czech? We enjoy doing things differently. Do you know that thanks to our innovations you can see better? We pay attention to the basics and cleverly apply them. We respect nature. We care about safety and well-being of our people visitors and residents. We make it easy for companies to innovate and also for technologically advanced startups to get their businesses off the ground. You surely know our work. You come to us for the results of our work or we come to you.
you will not get lost with us. Also, there are many beautiful places worth visiting in the Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Now you know a little bit what it's like. Will you come?